Okay, so that's finished compiling after just over four minutes. So what we we'll need to do now is to install it. So I'm going to become root. And what we need to do is to mount the boot, which I think I've already got mounted. Yep. And there's several ways of doing this. You can either copy the files manually, which is the way that LFS does it, or you can install them with a make target called make install. And if I now do a listing of the boot directory, you can see that it's copied um, the new config file, a system.map, which I think has got a load of symbols in it for the kernel. And this is the actual uh, kernel itself. So the existing kernel that's running is obviously the other one. So if I do you name minus a, uh, you can see that um, it's 5.10.61. This is the current Gen 2 version. Um, so you can see it's a little bit behind, well, what was the latest one a few weeks ago. Um, the reason why I didn't update we use the Gen 2 and recompile that and update that is because the Gen 2 kernel has been modified slightly. Um, so I'm not, I wasn't sure what effects that would have. Um, and plus I'm also showing you a vanilla kernel. Um, it's not, not, um, like assigned to any particular distribution. So it, a vanilla kernel should work on any distribution without any problems. So that's the data files copies. As you can see, the one that I've just built is slightly smaller than the previous Gen 2 one. So that extra 60K or so is probably um, maybe Gen 2 related stuff or other stuff that could be removed from the kernel. Having said that, bear in mind there's no Bluetooth um, uh, drivers in there. so. Um, it may be a little bit bigger anyway if I was to add that in. The next thing to do is run another target called make modules install. And what this does, it copies any modules that were created and installs them in a, as you can see, in, in a version directory under lib modules. So for each version of the kernel that you install to boot from, there should be Assuming you've got modules to um, install, if, you've, if it's a monolithic kernel with no modules, then you won't. It will come back with an error saying it can't find anything to install. But otherwise, the modules will go in lib modules, then the version number, and you can see the i5 7400 string that I added in, and you can see all the different modules it's put in. So there's stuff for the wireless, the stuff for the networking, and there's a couple of Della um, related uh, kernel modules there as well. So the last thing to do is to update the bootloader. Um, well, there's one more thing to do before that. Normally in Gen 2, if you've got um, programs or apps that are built against the kernel, um, you need to rebuild them um, because you're updating the kernel. Those apps will still be working against the previous version of the kernel um, and they won't work with a new kernel that they they just break or you'll get errors um, now normally in gen 2 there's a command to do that and it takes care of rebuilding any packages that have been built against the kernel it, it just knows which ones to rebuild um, I don't know what other distributions do how, how you'd have to take that into account um, if it was Linux from scratch you'd have to be aware of which packages would need to be rebuilt, rebuilt and rebuild them manually. Um, I'm not sure if the command for Gen 2 is to, um, it's an emerge command, modules, rebuild. Um, I'm going to try it. I don't think it would be appropriate in this. Sorry, it's module rebuild. 
Um, I'm not sure it will work because I guess. Well, I don't know actually. I'll see. I guess it will only work on the Linux versions that Gen 2 knows about. Um, yeah, I'm, I don't think I'm going to even bother. But you can see I've got ZFS built against the kernel. So it would mean that if I've got any ZFS um, data sets or pools, um, they wouldn't work after I've rebooted into this kernel, but it's not a problem for me at the moment. Another one I'm aware of is VirtualBox. That gets built up against the kernel, so I obviously haven't got that on this machine, um, but that, that would be an issue. Um, so apart from that, the only thing left to do is to update the boot bootloader, um, which I can do with Gen 2. Um, it's just... In fact, it will probably be the same with um, just about every single distribution. Linux from scratch is different. You have to update the grub config file separately, but then it's a lot lot simpler file. If I show you the existing file on here, um, it's quite complex. The Linux from scratch one's probably no more than, I don't know, 10 lines long. It's a very straightforward one, but the automated script puts a lot more information in you can see this is just for booting one um, well it's actually several versions but um, they're hidden um, because I've got another disk that I can boot from in this machine so what I could do with uh, Gen 2 and uh, indeed virtually as I say virtually any other distribution is to run a script in grub called grub make com config minus o for output and you specify the config file which is usually boot grub grub.cfg and as this runs it will display what it finds um, to add to the menu so you can see that it's recognized that that's the older version of the kernel so it's put that second and it's put the latest version that I've just built um, top of the list don't worry about these things. Um, as I say, I've got um, other uh, Gen 2 Linux that I boot from on this machine uh, for testing videos that I do. So you probably won't see those, so don't worry about that if you don't. The important thing is that you see um, these, these lines, the old versions, plus especially the new version of the kernel. Um, and that's it. So all I need to do now is to um, come out of the root. I'll close this browser down. And come out of here. And reboot. So there's the menu again. You won't see these extra options um, because, so I've got uh, effectively a dual boot on this machine. Uh, but just let it boot the default one, and there it is booting. There's no apparent errors, which is good. And that all seems to work. I've got graphics, so that's good. If I now log in. I've got the prompt up and everything, so it all seems to have worked. I can check that I'm actually running the new kernel, check the version, and as you can see there, 5.13.19, it's the first revision, it was built today at quarter to two. Um, so yeah, that's that all looks good. I can run the message, it's worth doing this just to have a quick look through to see if there's any errors or any messages that um, might need taken care of. Um, generally any errors or anything needs to be dealt with should appear in red. Um, so I can just have a quick look here. There's all the ACPI stuff loading. I'll just have a quick look through. Sometimes worth looking through and reading what's there in case there is anything that you might 
be concerned about. There's all the Spectre stuff, all the mitigation for the CPU vulnerabilities. Let's have a look through some more ACPI stuff. So this is the PCI bus being scanned now. And the IRQ is being assigned. USB cores being loaded. So it all looks pretty good. There's the video being initialized and you can see it's loaded the firmware there. I don't know if you remember from before that file, that bin file was the one that I had in the uh, lib firmware directory and it was in a subdirectory called i915 so that's loaded ok AHCI so this is the serial ATA being loaded with the SCSI back end USB hubs being loaded so that looks good So that might be something I want to look at, disabling energy efficiency optimization. So um, you know, maybe I do want that enabled, so I could investigate that. Uh, there's the sound that's been installed. The frame buffer has been installed, which is a good thing because obviously the GUI relies on that. There's that 801 SM bus. As I say, I think that might be just to do with the 8201 chipset. Why well, that's kind of appeared from nowhere. Um, and there's some more stuff from the um, audio subsystem. You can see there's the sound chip there, and it's obviously identified the um, ports and things for the sound, so that all looks good. I've even got uh, volume controls down there, which um, if there was a problem with the sound system they wouldn't appear or they'd be muted you can see I can modify the volume so that's obviously all good finally there's the discs actually being initialized there's the CD-ROM there there's the boot disk um, yep and there's the other disk I've got on there which is a spinning disk And you can see this is a point that in it starts. So this is where the kernel's handed over its, or finished its boot sequence. It's handing over to the init process to start the actual operating system running. And you can see there's the USB ports being scanned again. USB optical mouse. Um, Dell wire keyboard on the USB as well. So that looks all good. There's the network card, the Ethernet card. Um, looks like it's trying to disable ASPM now. That, I don't know if you can see that. That's in a sort of bolder or brighter white. So that may be like a warning, something that's not an issue particularly, but it might be something I want to look at. Um, and there's the wireless. Uh, and there's some more stuff with the network the wired ethernet and some more with the wireless so you can obviously see it's doing several things at once here it's all being the messages are being interleaved and there's e-log in D and the last message we've got is something to do with um, oh that looks like the ethernet it, yeah it's looking for this firmware same as I didn't have it loaded before um, so I'd need to track that down and add it in but you can see the wireless is working anyway, regardless of that. And it could be just uh, something to accelerate the Ethernet. For example, put it into gigabit mode. It might just be in, um, you know, 100 megabits per second mode at the moment rather than... Oh, no, it is in gig one gigabit, actually. And it's got full flow control. So I don't know what, what that's for, but um, it's probably best not to ignore that and to install the firmware. Um, and there's E-Login D working uh, with the login 
so that all looks okay I'll just do an IPA and it shows me that the wireless is down it's um, maybe down because it's not being used at the moment um, but you can see the wire wired um, connection is up it's working and I can confirm that if I do ping ping my gateway uh, yes yeah, getting a response that shows the Ethernet's working okay um, Bluetooth I didn't set up um, but it certainly knows about the wireless so that's that's good that shows the drivers working the fact that it's there it just needs to be configured uh, by the looks of it so that is it really um, yeah if I run top you can see that there's about half a just about under half a gigabyte being used currently um, and that's not bad considering we're run a, running a uh, full-blown GUI at the moment um, but yeah so that's the kernel updated to a newer version than was installed previously